Hello time travelers. This is my video about how I lost a bunch of weight in response to people almost constantly asking me. So I don't mind having conversations with folks, but I can't tell them all the information. So I decided to make this video. But basically it was keto diet, exercise, and there was some technology involved. And since this is a like budget tech channel, this really does have good value for my subscribers. Other viewers might find this video interesting as well because everybody's weight loss journey is different. I'm going to go over a whole bunch of different things in this video. So I'm going to have little chapter things where there's little lines in the little, little lines in the little. The thing at the bottom of the video where you hover your mouse, you can skip to a part if that's the part you want to see. Or maybe you do some stuff with your own research and you come back and you want to see a certain part whatever it's there to help you out also in the description i'm going to have little timestamps. also in the description if i mention a product that i've used or like a video where i learned something i'm going to be linking it all later on if i do a follow-up video i'm going to link that down in the description as well so you can find everything easily and come on guys please 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 that's a segue to this i'm almost begging here Stop DMing me. This video is about all the DMs, direct messages, that are sent to me asking me stuff. Use the comments. It, I'm not being private. I'm, I'm a YouTuber. I have this public information. Okay? I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm open to having a social conversation with folks. Disclaimer. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a doctor. I am telling you a little bit about what I researched and what worked for me, okay? So that's where we're going with this. The stuff I put in the description that's going to have Amazon affiliate links. If you shop Amazon after using my link, it doesn't necessarily have to be the thing you clicked on. Amazon will give me a small cut at no extra cost to you. That's just FYI. That's how that works. Also, if you've had success with different diet plans or doing a different thing, tell, tell me in the comments. Moving on to the actual meat of the video, pun intended. Proof about losing weight. Section number one. Here's a pic of me with my son Charlie in 2009. I'm sorry, I didn't have a smartphone yet, so the resolution is very freaking low. But there's Mr. Chubby Face holding my son. And Mr. Chubby Face is me on my Nova. And I got my script down here, so if I'm not looking up here, just I apologize. I don't want to leave stuff out. Then here's some pics of me with my son in the park. That was 2009, by the way. Here's me in 2013 when I bought this giant Lego set. And for some reason, my girlfriend at the time wanted to take pictures of it. And, you know, I got Mr. Chubb face going on here. But check out the pants I'm wearing in that picture. I fit those pants in 2013. These are the same pants. Here's proof. I got to put these pants over on top of these other pants Meh. without unbuttoning them and here in frame just a couple inches there stupid microphones in the way say a couple inches and these are the pants that i mow the lawn in now and they're super baggy and they're always trying to fall off and i have to have the belt super tight and it's awkward but i don't care because i'm mowing the lawn toss eh, eh. subscribe to the channel guys all right next section of the video is what I call before losing the 100 because this is going to lead into the story of how I lost 100 pounds it starts in 2015 while I was shopping for pants with my girlfriend that was then my fiance we were at Kohl's and you know your your waist goes up and down so you have to take the pants to the freaking dressing room and also different pants companies have different sizes or whatever so you try it on and I'm like I'm a 48 inch waist now freaking no, I'm not going to be 48. And I refused to buy any pants that day. And I just started doing workouts. And the workout I was doing is just this ab roller thing with its handles and wheels. And I was doing that once or twice a week. Just because I didn't want to be 48 inches. I didn't know my weight at that time, but hold on. I started eating less, doing the ab workout thing. I was also started drinking less pop. Because I was drinking two pops a day. I went from working at a warehouse where I needed the caffeine and I had two pops a day and I was up and down three stories three times every hour. So I was burning off all those calories, you know, and then I was in an office job still drinking two pops a day and that's how I gained the weight. Well, 
That's how I gained even more weight. But I digress. Even before I gained the weight at the office job, I couldn't fit this shirt. This is a Nine Inch Nail shirt my mom bought me in the year 2000. See? Nine Inch Nails! And I couldn't wear it a few years later because I was gaining weight. And I could wear it again now. How many people do you know have an article of clothing in their closet that they say, no, I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to be able to fit that again? How many of those people have actually done it? Well, one now, me! I've done it. So, drinking less pop, because I switched to tea, and I realized later on in my life that the reason why that helped me lose weight too was because that was sweetened with sugar, not high fructose corn syrup. Because sugar is both fructose and glucose, and glucose can be burned as energy, and fructose cannot. It has to be converted and stuff, and go through your liver, and then there's glycogen install involved. Now, I'm not a doctor or physiologist. Bio something? I don't know. I'm none of those things. This is just stuff I learned. Like, the, a channel that I recommend that this guy really knows what he's talking about is Thomas DeLauer. Okay? Right. You can just check out his videos. Any specific topics you want to learn on. He'll just yammer off science. It's awesome. But anyways, doing that for a few months, my pants was down to 42 inches. And then a thing happened. I call the breakup. Warning! Drama incoming! But I'll take it easy on you guys. I'll keep the drama brief. So then in 2016, my fiance left. Yeah, drama. After she left, occasionally, about after two months or so, she would email me with her drama. And then another two months, more drama. Another two months, more drama. Blah, blah, blah. Another couple months, she apologized. But I'm not getting into that. I was working on a lot of music at the time, and focusing on that was helping me move on from my ex, right? But every time she contacted me, it was rehashing stuff, so after a while... It was February of 2017, and when she apologized, and some friends told me after I talked to them, and I was like, there was so much of my life that was for her, that I realized that the daily habits of dealing with her... It's not something that was bad, I was carrying her burdens happily, it was part of my life, it's not a negative thing, to me, it was a positive thing, but how do I change from doing that? And they said, no, okay, what you gotta do is try to find a way to help yourself. It's not a selfish thing, just like refocus that energy, right? So that's how the weight loss got started. And that's what I call this section. So just to recap, back in 2015, I got down to a 42 inch waist and I was 48 before. So at that point, I bought a scale and I was about 270 pounds. I recently bought alcohol, you know, trying to figure out stuff. Trust me, that's a bad move. Don't do it. But I was just like, I got a couple things. And I was like, oh, if I mix these two things and then add juice or whatever, then I can have a relaxing night. And that wasn't working for me. So the first thing I did to improve my life was like, this is not helping me. And I poured all the alcohol down the drain. And I smoked cigarettes rarely, occasionally, like once every two or three months. And I noticed I was doing it once or twice a week. And what really was the wake-up call, because I was working on my music, and my voice was cracking while I was singing. And I'm like, that is not the style I'm going for. I'm not like, la la la, I'm singing a song. And... No, no. You know, <laughs> smokers who sing like, this is my singing, I'm a constant smoker. And that's not the voice I'm looking for either. I digress. So I threw the cigarettes away. So I was feeling so motivated, and I thought about all the high fructose corn syrup that was in the pop that I drank every day, because it was at least one a day. On the weekends, it was more than one if I had to work outside and it was hot, like working on my Nova. And what I did was like, I gotta switch something, I can't just quit it, I have to replace it. So I started buying the sugarcane soda, like, you know, the, the expensive Coke in the glass bottles, Coca-Cola that is. Or Jones Soda is another example. And I noticed that instead of drinking at least one a day, I was only drinking two or three a week. Because whatever is in high fructose corn syrup is just way more addicting. You get more withdrawals, at least for me. Then after a while, I wasn't drinking that anymore. I was like, started buying fruit juice. So I was telling friends about that. And somebody told me, okay, what I recommend that you try doing next is quit eating processed sugar and i'm like well, what do you mean and she says do you have anything that you like to buy that has sugar in it and it's like oreos double stuff i love my double stuff oreos and she says find something to replace that with so i started making homemade cookies in instead of you know eating the oreos all the time and then i was able to wean myself off of eating cookies so now there's no alcohol no cigarettes 
no high fructose corn syrup, no cookies. So I went through all the stuff in my house and I, I found the word sugar and high fructose corn syrup was in other things. And I just started cutting back on those. I wasn't going to get rid of them. Like bread. Like I felt at the time, I don't feel now, that you have to eat bread. Then, then, the mother load. I quit caffeine. This happened because I noticed I was having two coffees a day. And that was, you know, to replace the caffeine in the pot that I used to drink. I should explain how I weaned myself off. Because quitting caffeine cold turkey is really bad for the your physiology and your brain and all kinds of youtube channels talk about you know just quit it straight up all i did was i had my my main cup in the morning and then the one that i would have after lunch i made it less and then it, like a three quarters cup full and then it was half and then i was having just the first one and having it stretch out all day and i got to the point to where i was having like this much coffee in a coffee cup I was making that last all day, and then one day I just quit, and that's how I did it. And then this one day, on the weekends, I, I always have slept more on the weekends because I'm catching up from the week, right? Averaging out the hours is what I've recently learned using this is what I'm doing. Is just These things are cool, by the way. But I realized I was getting up way earlier, so the one Saturday morning, I was up at 9.30 a.m., and I was changing out the CPU in the laptop. I was upgrading it personal laptop and I sent a picture to my cousin because the type of CPU that was in there was not a uh, BGA or LGA it was a PGA so any geeks out there or if you're just interested I was like blown away that the CPU itself had pins on it because normally Intel CPUs are pins on the motherboard and the CPU itself is just smooth so I sent a picture to my cousin like check it out this is freaking sweet. It's a PGA. And he texted me back and said, What are you doing up so early doing geeky things? And I was like, I quit caffeine. Blew his mind. So I checked the scale and I was down to 230 pounds. But that whole period of time took about five months to quit all those different things. So then this is how I actually started on the keto diet. A co-worker of mine had lost a bunch of weight and I could visibly tell. And I asked him how it worked. And his name's Jahi. He's been on my channel a couple of times. I'll put a card up here for when we talked about racism around the George Floyd time. He has his own channel called Farce the Nation, but he hasn't uploaded anything recently. I'll, I'll link both in the description and you can do whatever. Go visit his channel and say, upload more videos, dude. But anyways, he's telling me how low carb works. How it works is that Basically, your body has three different types of enzymes that the stomach produces and other organs and produce. It's, it's all this sciencey stuff, biology. Hey, that's the word I was trying to think of earlier. Biologist. I am not a biologist. Anyways, you got the enzymes that, that break down carbohydrates, and you have the enzymes that can utilize ketones as energy. And then you got the third one, which is healing. And you actually, your body can cycle through all three every day. If, depending on your diet and exercise, etc., etc., and how often you eat. Because if you eat carbs, snacking all the time, you'll never get to the other two. Ketones is something your body produces for the energy consumption of fats. And it, it's actually quicker. Because, like, like to, to burn it, because you can burn it straight as energy. It, consider like like a Tesla electric car versus my Nova at its eight miles a gallon. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? Even the best gasoline burning engine uh, loses like 20 to 40 percent of its efficiency uh, from wasted energy because there's friction and it's moving parts, etc. I'm not getting into all that science. Whereas electric motor is put right on the axle and 90 percent of its energy goes to the torque turning the wheels it's, it's a similar concept i'm just doing like a metaphor thing here or a simile i don't know these things these fancy english words but what i mean is like when you're burning carbs your body has to expend energy to convert it before it can use it to give you energy to do stuff in the day but burning fat's different your body has to burn very little energy to use it and that's why you lose weight because your body can burn it for a while and you're, you're already burning fat. And if it needs more energy, it's like, well, I'm already in this mode called ketosis. I can just pull some fat that's stored on your muscles and use that as energy now. 
So how I got to preparing myself for the keto diet was I just went through all my cabinets in the fridge and just kept eating everything like every day for a while that had carbs until it was gone, until all I had left was tortillas. And I'm like, screw it. I want to start this diet now. And I threw those away. So then I, I drove to a store called Meyer. Think of it as a big box store, like the size of a Walmart, but it's a local business. So, mm, you know what I mean? And I just spent two hours in the grocery section, over two hours, just grabbing every food that I knew that I liked after I read the ingredients and made sure that its carbs were super low or almost gone. And if it said sugar, I read the uh, the daily serving. I read the, what's it called? Come on, brain. Serving size. Thank you, random seltzer can. And made sure it said the little less than one for sugar. Because there's a thing, like, I found out that sugar is the worst thing ever. That your daily dose... Dose? You know how these things say percentage? They never put the percentage for sugar. There's always a blank line next to that. They never tell you the truth about how much sugar you're supposed to have in a day. It's, it's three grams. Three... Grams. Wrap your mind around that. So, all the sugar we're eating, we're like, just making ourselves exhausted trying to break it down and it's addicting because it gives you a, like an instant dopamine response when you eat it so some of the stuff i could remember that i bought at meyer that day was like blocks of cheese a sliced cheese i got one kind of salami that didn't have any sugar in it i did buy a steak angus hot dogs olive oil bacon i can't remember anything so that was years ago so i ate through that stuff because i had like 200 dollars worth of stuff don't worry, don't worry, that's not going to be your grocery budget. Trust me, if you do keto and you get what's called keto adapted to get used to it, your budget actually goes down. Well, your expenses go down because you're not eating as much volume. So I ate that stuff for two weeks. And my friend Jahi had a scale next to his booth in the booth across from him in the office. Because he was checking his weight when he came into the office every day. And he was riding the bike to work. Which I commend him for doing that back then. That was cool. And he would weigh himself. So I took my shoes off, stood on his scale, and I said, it, it literally said like 216 pounds or something. And I said, what the f... Because I, I lost like 14, close to 14 pounds in two weeks. I couldn't freaking believe it. Because I had been watching my weight, but only weighing myself once a week or so. And he tells me, you know, you need to weigh yourself every day. But about the first two weeks of keto, I didn't really get the keto flu, as it's called. Maybe I did a little bit, but I did later learn how to avoid it. And that's salt, magnesium, and potassium. Wait, let me double check. I got... Boop. Yeah, so... These are also good for fasting, which is why I know about them now. And when I was researching them, people were saying that they help you not experience the effects of the keto flu. It's not a real flu. People are like, oh, I'm sick. I'm going to quit doing keto. No, no, no. It's your body getting rid of all that something built up. I can't remember what it's called. Basically, your stomach is one of the organs for handling all these enzymes and... It's, it has to heal itself from all that carbing it was doing before. Sorry, I'm not being scientific and exact, but moving on to how I did the diet, including the exercise. Because before, I was just doing the ab slider thing once or twice a week. When my friend Jahi told me that I need to work on my legs and my abs and my arms, not just my abs. Because when you lose weight, you lose weight everywhere. And you want to build muscle everywhere slowly or whatever pace you want but not just in one area and i was just doing the ab slide thing just to lose the weight and he's like nah you gotta spread the load out so you get muscle everywhere so the the push-ups i was doing are just <laughs> i couldn't do a real push-up if my life depended on it and i bet you most people have never done push-ups before or they haven't done it in a few years couldn't either because it's like all the stress on your back and your legs and everything i was doing the the, the easy ones on your knees I still lost the weight. I did those. I did squats. Squats are easy. And I did leg lifts. Where you lay on your side and you lift your leg up. Like that. So the thing is you, you, you keep the workout simple. You keep it easy. You see how many you can do. Right? 
you find out your max before you can't go anymore. I don't mean like you want to fall apart like you're on the Olympics. Like, I'm going to win. I'm going to get that gold medal. No, you're just like, oh my God, this hurts too much. I'm going to stop. Call that 100%, okay? That's 100%. Do a little bit of math and do 80% of that. It's real easy if you did 100 and you feel like you're maxing out. I'm only going to do 80. Use a calculator. Take the number you did and say that's my max and hit times 80% sign and hit the equal button. That's how many you want to do. And do that for a few weeks. Three weeks, four weeks, six weeks. Doesn't matter. Some people do one week and then they improve. Their muscles are building up. They do more. And that's what I did. Until I got to a point where my max wasn't increasing so i just stayed there and you needed to work out because i think it's the endocrine system uh correct me in the comments if i said it wrong but your fat can't move throughout your body on its own because there's no pump it's not like your lungs that's got a diaphragm to move it in and out or your heart which is a physical pump you know you moving and doing physical exercise is what moves the fat off of your flabby arms into your stomach could get burned as energy. The more you know. So let's talk about what ate. What ate? <laughs> so let's talk about what I ate every day. So Monday through Friday before work, I had four strips of bacon. That's it. It was delicious. It was satisfying. That's the most important thing. And it turns out that was the best thing I ever did because it's the best meat you can have for keto diet because it's so high in fat. Then for lunch every day, I just had five strips of lunch meat with three sl slices of cheese you do whatever combination you want but no bread no bread that's i didn't, I didn't eat any bread uh, i just rolled them up put them in a container next to two hard-boiled eggs that was my lunch and then for dinner i would alternate some nights i would have two angus hot dogs with one dill pickle spear and i would cut the end of a block of cheese off of sharp cheddar because I like sharp cheddar. If you don't like it, I don't care. You can whatever kind you want. Just an inch off the end. On the other alternating nights, I would eat... What was it? Durr. Three chicken breast tenderloins. You know, in the beginning of the week, I'd cook them in the oven. And these are ones that have no breading or anything on them. It's like you read the packaging and it says, Ingredients, chicken. That's it. And I would cook them up at the beginning of the week, throw them in the fridge, and then I'd eat them three at a time. I personally love spicy food, so I'd drown them in Frank's hot sauce, put some salt on there, and have that with some Colby Jack cheese instead of cheddar because cheddar is too, you know, bitter to have with spicy food. <laughs> and back then, we didn't have, you know, stevia squirt bottles to put into seltzer cans, which is what I drink now. I just squirt stevia in, in one of these careful it doesn't fizz over so what i did back then was i just made kool-aid but with no sweetener at all and i'd put a little bit of lime juice in it and it was good and the only reason i was doing that was because drinking water all day was annoying i was drinking uh a cup or two of water with my bacon in the morning and then a cup or two of water before lunch and then one or two cups at lunch and then those two cups of kool-aid for dinner and every friday and this just come from growing up Catholic a little bit for a few years. I went to Catholic church. I had fish once a week and it was usually tuna because you, you know, because of pollution and natural stuff, there's some fish you don't want to have more than once a week. But why I mentioned the Catholic thing, because that was a thing when I was a kid in the eighties is that you weren't supposed to eat meat on Fridays for a while back then, whatever. The only reason I did that was so I remembered that I got my omega-3s. And I also had my eggs on the weekend. So I'd wake up on the weekends. I'd work out fasted because I heard that if you work out fasted, you burn more fat. Because your body's like, oh my gosh, i got to do this as strenuous activity. Where am I going to get the energy? Oh, ketones, duh. I got ketones stored on my muscles and my flabby bingo wing arms. <laughs> bingo wings is like an old person shouting, bingo! I got it! I won the dollars! And it flaps around. <laughs> You're already in ket ketosis, and you work out free energy. It's like you got gas tanks built into your body. And the eggs gave me more omega-3s, and I always cooked my eggs in Smart Balance brand spread because they add omega-3 to it. And on the weekends, the dinner was still alternating between the Angus hot dogs or the chicken breast tenderloins. 
And I learned later on, you do not want to eat the keto labeled foods. They weren't even out in grocery stores back then in 2017, but they started coming out later. They will literally kick you out of ketosis. And what does that mean? Ketosis is when you have enough ketones in your blood that your body knows anytime I need energy, I can just pull it from my fat stores. And if the ketones are low, it's going to make you hungry to snack or something when you need energy. It, it's insulin's involved. The last time you ate is involved. How much carb or protein was in that meal is involved. But while I was doing this diet, I was using the Atkins app on my phone. That's what helped me keep my, my carbs, my protein, and my fat at the right level. So it's like carbs is this much of your daily diet, and then protein is this much, and then all of that is fat because you burn through this to get your body started. You burn through the carbs real fast, and then it's like, okay, I'm burning food. I need something to get me to the next phase, and it goes through the protein. And a lot of that protein is also used for building body tissue. And then it gets through that and it hits the fat. And that's a slow burn. That's going to last you all day. So things that say keto pack on the packaging in the store and also keto recipes that you might see all over online. My recommendation that at least for what worked for me, use those either for your, your cheat days or for maintenance when you want to maintain your weight. And trust me, by the time you lose weight, It'll be easy to maintain the weight because you'll look at the scale every day and you'll know what you got to do next. So anyways, over the next eight months, I lost the last 60 pounds of that 100 pounds that I was talking about. And I got down to 170. So let's just sink in. In eight months, I lost 60 pounds on the keto diet. Some people will say that's losing weight too fast. I don't think so. I was fine. I had skin hanging off of me. And I'm going to tell you how I dealt with that in a few minutes. So don't don't worry. I'm not I'm not skipping that subject. When I first started, my goal was to just get down to 200 pounds, but then I flew right past that goal. So see this chart from my Atkins account from June 2017. I went from 210 to 190 in 3 months. So I started increasing my workout to include push-ups for the triceps because I was only doing it this way, which does your biceps. Your biceps are on top. And I started doing ips push-ups this way which gets your triceps. But I couldn't do like five. I couldn't even do five tricep push-ups, even on my knees. So then I looked at these different tricep workouts. I'm like, which one can I do? And I found what's called tricep throwbacks. It's where you, you're holding a weight and you throw it back a certain way. I'll find a good video and link it for you. After doing tricep throwbacks, I'm only doing 30 on each arm in a set doing three sets, so a total of 90 on each arm with a break in between each 30, you know? Two weeks of that, I was able to do 30 push-ups. On my knees still, going like that. So it's, an, it's another testament to how you do building up your muscles so you can do more. So by August, I was down 165 pounds, which is even lower. And I could have lost more weight if I didn't do this sooner. I made a spreadsheet and on the left column. I put all the different foods that I bought. And the top, I made it angled so I could see the week with dates. And the top row, below the row with the dates, was my plus or minus in weight. Did I lose weight? Say I only lost two pounds that week, put a minus two. If I lost five pounds, minus five. If I gained, I put plus whatever the weight was, or even if there was a zero. And then I identified which foods were making me not lose weight. And as you can see here, it's all one brand. It's still a good brand, but I identified the ingredient and it was a sweetener. So without skipping a section, I'm gonna talk about the apps and then I'll get back to the sweeteners. So I used the Atkins app on my my phone and it was a godsend. So I, I knew how much room I had for carbs that day, which isn't very much. And I wasn't even eating nuts yet because the Atkins website will tell you the different phases of losing weight. You, you find out your goal weight and they say you need to Avoid these foods for this phase, and then when you get this far away from your goal weight, you can incl start including these foods, and then when you get this far, etc., etc. That's fine and all good. Another app that I tried a couple years ago, which I might go back to using again, is just called Keto. And it has pluses and minuses. The Atkins one was free, but it didn't have all the foods in it. It might be better now because it's been a few years. But let's move on about the, what sweeteners to avoid. So I said how I discovered that the sweetener 
in those protein shakes was kicking me out of keto or making me not lose weight or whatever it was doing. That sweetener was called sucralose. Now, if you're careful that that brand's isopure, I didn't say it earlier because it was slipping my mind. That that brand that has a lot of products now that don't use that sweetener, they use one of the good sweeteners, which I'm going to go over in a second. I found this video on YouTube from a channel called Keto Connect. It's called The Ultimate Guide to Low Carb Sweeteners, where they got every sweetener that they could find at the time and put it in their coffee in the morning, and they tested their blood sugar by actually pricking their finger and testing their blood, which is more accurate than those little ketone strips that you pee on, and you're kind of like, is that purple? Is it pink? I can't freaking tell. I don't care. Flick. I lost weight yesterday, so I know I was in ketosis yesterday, you know? So there's a lot of sweeteners you want to avoid, not just because they're poison, like aspartame or acesulfame, potassium, but because they spike your insulin. So when your insulin goes up, your body thinks it's going to have to send glucose, no, fructose, sorry, send fructose to your liver, okay? So you don't want that. So you want things with a really, really low glycemic load. Erythritol, allulose, monk fruit, stevia. The first two are really hard to get your body adapted to because they're literally sugar that's already been pre-processed by a machine or some chemical process or something. And your body sees it and it's like, oh, that's yesterday's sugar. Just go ahead and poop that out. It's not that bad. You, you usually get gassed. But if you're doing something ridiculous like me when I'm having a cheat day and I make this giant bowl of pudding as literally this big and I eat the whole thing and then I have to go to the bathroom. I'm just saying. You just... It's not a, an avoid sweetener. Like, oh, I can't believe you're going to make me poop. Rob, why are you telling me eat this stuff? You're just so scary. What? It's, uh, no. It's... You just... Pfft. It's fine. I mean, you got... Glacier vitamin water has got erythritol in it. And you're just, you're taking the smallest dose ever. It tastes like sugar, but it's not. That's what I'm talking about. Actually reduces your net carbs, which brings on me to, brings on me, brings me on to the next section. Section. The truth about fiber and net carbs. So why you might see net carbs on something is because fiber reduces the carb load on your system. Because fiber, like, expands or something and absorbs carbs? I'm not sure. But one is the sex... One is the su su yeah. success. One of the success stories I read about this guy was like 450 freaking pounds and he got down to 170 was that he had psyllium husk every day. And I started having one or two of those a day. And if I saw my Atkins app say my carbs was a little bit over, I had three that day. And another thing about the having the fiber is that it helps you poop. When you're on a keto diet, you burn almost everything you eat. So you're like, why haven't I pooped in four days? And then you go to poop and barely anything comes out. You're like, fine. Well, toilet, stupid, not happening. Bye, toilet. See you later. No one no one talks to their toilet. And then the next day, you have a big crap. You're like, where'd you come from? Well, if you have your fiber, it's a little more regular. Okay? So, just putting that out there. And erythritol does the same thing. Because like I said earlier, your body's like, I already processed that sugar. And you're like, yeah, that's what I want you to think. <laughs> it wants to poop it out. So it like takes carbs with it. <clears throat> oh man, I've been talking a lot. I'm gonna get a drink. Oh man, this video is gonna be a pain in the butt to edit, but it's gonna be totally worth it. This is called Zevia. This did exist back in 2017, but it was not as accessible. If I turn this around, these macros are gonna blow your mind. There you go, all zeros. And it's sweetened with stevia. And it's freaking delicious. And my camera won't focus back on my face now while I do. Um, there we go, that's more betters. Ugh, black cherry is my favorite. I wish I knew about that back then, because I would've been paying a premium for it, so I wouldn't have to just drink water constantly all day. So then I moved, after I lost all that weight. I'm like, Jimmy Christmas, I lost 100 pounds. And I got down to 154 because of moving. I had to move by myself because I was alone. Broken heart shapes. And the house needed to be cleaned up. And I was doing all this work to get all that done. And it was exhausting. And then I had the hanging skin. I had the bingo wings. And I got afraid. So I started slowly adding more carbs, which is safe carbs. But I was having more than I should have been having. Because I didn't want to lose any more weight. Even though I still had this gut. And between... You and me, 
And the whole world, I guess, because I'm telling the whole world, I should not have stopped losing weight. I should not have been afraid of the hanging skin. Because if you got hanging skin, don't be afraid of it. Get to your goal weight. Whatever your goal is, get to that first and then deal with the hanging skin after. And then what you do is you start introducing intermittent fasting. Because when I did research on how to get rid of hanging skin, I was not finding one definitive answer and I'm going to give it to you now because I had to combine the concepts from three different videos so s people would say oh when when you're fasting you're gonna burn muscle for energy not true you really think muscles the biggest organ in the body no your skin is your body's not stupid so when you burn when you run out of fat to burn your body burns your skin and it's I do not have the hanging skin. Look, I'll just pull the shirt tight because there's no flappy flaps, okay? I got rid of it. And I also made my stretch marks the same color as the rest of my skin instead of the ugly pink. And I learned that from Thomas DeLauer, by the way. Great, great channel to watch. And the way to do it was three things. Three times a week, you want to exfoliate. And I just got a body wash with charcoal in it. And I used the scotch bright pads that you buy for washing the dishes nothing expensive and you scrub towards the heart so when you're doing your arms you do towards the heart legs towards the heart back do your best you can you just exfoliate your whole body three times a week and then twice a week you get those makeup pads those rounds cotton rounds and you dab your whole body with witch hazel okay and then the other two times a week, you get multivitamin lotion and just cover all your skin everywhere in multivitamin lotion. And what will happen is you're fasting and it's going to burn off all that skin and consume it as energy. But your skin is not going to look all wrinkly and, and shrivelly and ugly with the pink stretch mark thing etc so what the stretch marks are is that when you gained weight way back when your skin had to expand so here's your skin trying to be skin and it needs to make room and does this and so this area becomes the extra tissue it grew and it looks like the rest of you looks normal but underneath that's that skin knows if you lose weight i'm gonna have to go back and do this and then you get this pink ugly line yeah so I'll tell you how I did the fasting, and because it's hard to get into it. So I was still eating the bacon every morning, still having the lunch meat and cheese for lunch. I started taking my bacon and wrapping it around my lunch so it would fit in my container, and I took it to work, and I would eat it like two hours after I got to work. And then it was three hours, and then it was four hours, and then I was eating my breakfast at lunchtime and pushing the lunch up. And I was pushing those meals up, and I wasn't. And then I stopped bringing the bacon to work, and I was eating the lunch an hour late, two hours late, three hours late. And then I was taking the lunch to work, not eating it, bringing it back home, and eating that for supper. And that's when I was like, "I'm on one meal a day. What now, grocery budget? What now?" Everybody's saying keto diet's not sustainable. I've gone beyond that. I've got like, I'm on level 99. Achievement unlocked. Intermittent fasting. Eating once a day. Uh, and I still do that for the most part. So I'm just going on to the end, getting close to the end of the video now. And that's a perfect segue for my last segment. Sustaining the keto diet. It's actually easier than it sounds. If you're over with friends or whatever and they're eating whatever they want, they, they usually have stuff in there that you can eat. You just take, I want some of that, some of that, some of that. And you just eat that. And then if you got really good friends, you're like, oh, Rob's coming over or whatever your name is. And he says, well, I can eat this, this, and this. They usually make extra of that. Like, I went to a friend's house once. We were having a, like, a book discussion. Yes, yes, don't worry. I'm, I'm a super nerd in all kinds of ways. Whatever. We were having a book discussion. And he had tacos. And he, he made homemade salsa. And he told me the ingredients. It was tomatoes and some other stuff. I'm like, I can have that. I want some of that. That's my carbs. And he says... Do you want any lettuce? And I'm like, no, because you made the salsa. That's going to make my carbs. And he's like, well, I've got tons of sour cream. And I've got tons of cheese. And I'm like, I'm going to have sour cream, cheese, and a little bit of salsa. And at that, that was my dinner. But then there's protein shakes. Because Isopure, I was talking about earlier, they started having stevia sweetened. 
protein shakes. They also have unflavored, and the unflavored is my favorite, honestly, because I can make all kinds of flavors with it. I've got my pantries full of all these uh, extracts and sweeteners, right? And I'll make a milkshake that's got heavy cream, protein powder, the vegetable powder stuff. Can't remember what it's called right now. I'm, I'm sorry. It'll be linked in the description, and I'll probably have pictures on the screen for you, obviously. And collagen, which is good for your nails and your skin. And it was just it was just a delicious treat for me to have after workouts. Another thing is like when I really need my carbs, but I only need like 10, is a thing called mug bread. And I'll I'll link a video to Keto Connects. Uh, they they call it something else, but it's technically mug bread because the first person who figured out how to make it, I think they made it in a coffee mug and it's almond flour and an egg and olive oil and a couple other things and I have it all the time. You can toast it, you can grill it. And my favorite is to have it with eggs and uh, some keto maple syrup. And I was on it so much and so dedicated to it that in 2019, I had a roommate for a while. And I told him, I don't want you bringing food in this house that's going to make me cheat on my diet. I'll make food for you if that makes it easier. And I did. And he lost weight. He, wa he lost 30 pounds in two months. And he's like, "How? what is this, what is this witchcraft? <laughs> and his girlfriend moved in for a while. Until they moved out at the end of 2019 without any warning and left me with the freaking rent that I didn't know that they were going to move out all of a sudden. Ah, nah. Well, anyways, she was overweight and she had type 2 diabetes. Within two weeks, she didn't need to take her diabetes medicine anymore. And the reason is because the insulin response is different when you're on a keto diet versus a regular diet. So now let's talk about closing remarks. If anything in this video has helped you, please tell me what in the comments. If you can add to this video or you think I've missed something, left something out, please put that in the comments as well because when I do a follow-up video, I'm going to link it down in the description. There are other diets that can help you. I'm not saying they're bad. Extreme diets, I don't know about that. Like eating only cabbage for a week. I did try doing only chicken and broccoli for a week and helped me lose weight because I got to 185. I'm like, no, 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 I need to back off from that. I'll, I'll put that in a card right here. I lost 10 pounds, went back down to 175. I was like, shoo. But, you know, like any diet that's a sustainable diet that people say, okay, this is not an extreme diet. This is not just for a few weeks or whatever. This is a lifestyle change. Those work. I've got other friends that have tried other diets and they say it works as long as you stick to it. Okay. And for me, keto is life because I got so much energy. All those different things I, I did to change in my life before I started keto, I was getting more and more energy from each thing I changed. Going on the keto gave me so much more energy and then going on to intermittent fasting gave me even more energy. Like, I'm wondering what's next. What else is there? So if I get any more energy, I might just like become a floating ball of light and ascend into the heavens. Well, that's it for this video. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much because actually watching the whole video is called engagement or something and YouTube likes it for the algorithms. And I basically do sci-fi comedy every now and then on this channel and I do tech stuff and vlogs and, and it's it's a fun time. So get subscribed. I didn't say earlier in the video because I'm not I don't do these long like health and diet videos like ever. But if you like any of the stuff that I've just mentioned like tech stuff, vlogs, sci-fi comedy, get subscribed. If you just want to help me out, subscribe too. There's other ways to help me. Click like on the video. I'm rambling now. This is getting awkward. Like, sometimes I do an awkward end screen. I guess that's what we're doing right now. I hope I do a follow-up video. Thanks for watching. Bye.